Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in the previous video we saw how we can call JavaScript functions from c -sharp in Blazor. In this video we're going to do the opposite, we're going to see how we can call c -sharp methods from JavaScript functions in Blazor. We can do this in Blazor and uh, there might be a use case, it might not be the thing you would do normally on a per component basis, but once in a blue moon you might need to do it and this video will show you how you can do that. There are actually two types of methods you can call with this technique. It's uh, static methods and methods that are part of an instantiated class. I'm going to show how you can do it with both, but I'm going to start with the static methods because they are the simplest to show. This video is part of my Blazor tutorial series, so if you don't want to miss any episode in the series, please subscribe and ring the sub notification bell to get notified of new episodes. So let's just dive into the code. Here's where we left off from the previous video, and uh, I'm going to continue in the same fashion where I just add pairs of sections and then I add some functionality to illustrate my point. The first thing I want to copy is an h3, so a header 3, and I'm going to name this give me random uh, int, so just a random number. And uh, then I'm going to copy this div that we have for the uh, answer uh, segment and I'm going to say the random number is, and then we're going to get a random number. And the whole idea of this uh, section will be to use a C sharp method from JS to get back a random number. So let's name this random number span. And uh, then I need a button to actually trigger this. But as I said, this won't be triggered uh, by C sharp. So let's remove the on click for now. I'm going to add it back in, but I'm going to show you. And let's give this uh, the class info to just make it look different. And last but not least, let's uh, name this button to random or randomize. I don't know. Yeah, this uh, looks good. So we have this new segment and now we need to, when we click this button, this span will be populated with a random int coming from a, a C sharp method. So let's go ahead and make this method. I'm going to create it here and this needs to be a public static task you can await it if you want so you can make it async but in this scenario i don't need to so i won't do it so task int and then i'm gonna name this generate random int and this also needs to have the js invocable because that's what it will give it the properties to be exposed to uh, js interrupt for Blazor, not every method is exposed, only the marked ones are, so you need to mark it with this. And in here now, I can actually generate a random string. So I'll do return task dot from result. And then in here is where I return the actual value. So random dot next will give me the next random int. So all I need to do is call this method from a JavaScript function. And as I'm here, I'm gonna just say, on click on this button. Keep in mind, this is not the same on click with the add symbol in the beginning. This is just HTML's on click. So do something on a click. And what I will do here is I'm gonna call a JavaScript function that doesn't exist yet. Let's just call it give me random int. So I'm just gonna call this and then I'm gonna go ahead and make it in the interrupt.js file. So I'm going here and I'm saying function give me random int and this is where I need to um, call the c-sharp method so let's see how we can do that the first thing you need to do is say dot net dot invoke method async and then you need two parameters here the first thing you need is the assembly name in our scenario it's the server blazer so server blazer goes here the next thing you need is the method name and, and we just just go and copy it it's called generate random int and this goes here now the next thing you need to do is you need to call then and then the then method is what once the task is computed this will be invoked and we have the result and we're gonna use just an expression here and I'm gonna say, what did we name that span? That span was named 
random given span. Oh, and in fact, we have a method that we have a function that can actually do that. So let's just call this function, which will just get the element by ID and set its inner text and say set element by ID. And the ID of the span is random number span. So the first thing we provide is this and then the text we want to set. So in this scenario, it's result. Sorry for the squiggly lines and all that. It's just my IntelliSense not picking this up properly. But let's see if this actually works. So what I expect to do is click this um, randomize button and then I'm going to call this JavaScript function, which is going to call this, which is going to call the C sharp method here. This might look impractical, but this is just to illustrate the point. You wouldn't normally do this in a realistic scenario. You'd have something more complicated that JavaScript possibly cannot do easily. So let's run this and see what we did. So I'm here in the interrupt and down here you can see that we have the, the random number is. And when I click the randomize method, as you can see, we're getting a random int. And if I make this smaller, successfully. You can actually see that if I put a breakpoint here and I click randomize, you can see that the method is invoked properly. And if I go in the debugger, you'll see exactly what's calling it, which is what will um, make this whole thing work. So let's just close this. And as you can see, we can just debug here normally and then just return it in the front end. Now this is cool and all, but what happens if you want to have a parameter here? How do you pass a parameter down? So in this scenario, if I want to have a max for my integer, so in this scenario, if I say, give me a number from zero to a hundred, I would put a hundred here. How do I do this with, um, in this situation? So what I would do is I would normally give this a parameter and I'm going to say max value here and then I would pass it down here. And then this would uh, make sure that the value doesn't exceed the max value I provide. And then back to my uh, interrupt.js, as I'm calling this method, I'll say here 100. And then I'm gonna give this uh, function a parameter. So max int size. And because this method accepts an array of different uh, parameters, I have a one-to-one -one mapping relationship. So if I say max int size here, because this is the index zero parameter in my generate random int method, Blazor knows to provide it here. And any serializable class would work in this scenario. So let's just run this again and see if we get just a hundred as the max number. So application is running again. If I click randomize, I wanna see a number from zero to a hundred. And sure enough, it is working. Our parameter is being passed down. And as you can see, I'm getting several zeros, which is very lucky. So, cool, we can do that. But what happens when you wanna call something from an instantiated class? And I'm gonna start by showing you how you can do this while keeping this method in the same Razor component, but I'm not saying that this is the best way to do this. I just want to show you the transition and then I'm going to show you the best practice. So let's start by removing the static keyword. And now if I just left this code the same, this method wouldn't be able to be found because I'm not specifying which exact instance of this class I want to give back. This is a bit more complicated because in this scenario now, we can't just simply use JS to call this give me random 100 method, we will have to move this into a C sharp class because we're gonna have to pass down a reference to the object that contains the method we wanna invoke. This is just too many random words, so let me just show you what it means. If I go down here and I create an async task, generate random, and this is just a private method to the component and I uh, and I paste this here. Ultimately, what I want to do is use this, sharp, this C sharp method to call this JS function using the JS runtime. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to paste it here. And I'm going to say, give me random int and then comma 100. 
And if I did that, now I can simply call this JS function with C sharp using interop, but I need to do an extra thing. I need to add another parameter and let me give it a new line. And this should be a dot net object reference. And then I need to do dot create dot create and now I need to specify the instance of the component that contains the method so I'm gonna say this again if you have experience with blazor and you see me doing this don't panic I will explain why I'm doing this and I'm gonna change it to a helper but please hang on so now this means that the reference to our object is passed to the JS function and this is done by just saying comma dot net instance here and now I can just simply delete this because I don't need it anymore or actually I can just save this which is uh, the manipulation of the span and now what I need to do is say dot net instance dot invoke method async and then I need the method name and the method name is generate random int and again I can specify uh, the parameter so this is max int size and same thing I'm doing a then and then I'm saying result and then I'm gonna use that to set the value of the span and once I do that let's just run this and see if it's working of course you need to um, <laughs> change your own click method to actually call the thing you want to click so let's, let's just run it so application is running let's click randomize again it is working fine but now if I minimize it let me open uh, the debugger tools and if I go to sources JS interrupt here's where uh, my method is being called and I want to stick a breakpoint here and click randomize to show you what this .NET instance actually has so let me expand this a little bit yes and randomize and as you can see we're hitting this breakpoint and the .NET instance it is just an ID that the system will use internally to know in which method to go and it just works now ideally you don't want to do this you don't just want to pass any instance just because the method happens to be here a more appropriate approach would be to create a new folder potentially called helpers but I will leave that up to you to decide it can be services it can be anything and in here I will create this method and I'm gonna name it random helper and I'm gonna take this cut it and I'm gonna paste it in here and let's just import everything exact same code we just imported everything here and now in my uh, JS interrupt method instead of creating uh, a reference to this specific component I will just say new random helper and I'm gonna pass down this instance of the object that contains the invocable you might have other services that you want to pass down but ideally you want to give it a slim object that it needs to keep track of with the methods you want to call and you don't want to have this method mixed with other methods that are not JS invocable ultimately let's see that this actually still works and let's just uh, click randomize as you can see everything is still working properly and we're passing down just a helper reference of the object we want to call again this might not be a solution for everything but ideally you want to limit the scope of your instantiated JS invocables and on a final note ultimately if you don't need to use JS interrupt don't and only use it if something is not possible with JS because it can actually introduce a lot of complexity in your code a lot of magic strings that are not tracked if the name of this function changes this will break and you need to test everything ultimately try to avoid it but if you have to use it just know that it is there that's all I had for you for today. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my GitHub sponsors for helping me produce these videos. 
If you want to help me as well, you'll find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.